The second half of this lecture involves balancing equations and starting to work on mass to moles to mass conversions. For balancing equations, this is sort of like doing a Sudoku. You just have to start where you can see an answer should be and then sort of build upon that. So what is recommended is we add one coefficient at a time and it's typically best to start with the most complex compound. That means the one with the most number of atoms. Then you go back and forth from reactant to product side based upon your coefficient that you chose in step one. When you're done, make sure that atoms in equals atoms out and charge in equals charge out. So let's start with this equation below. If we look at the molecules involved, the most complex one is the one that has four atoms here, the hydronium ion. So without any further knowledge, let's put a one in front of that. What putting a one in front of that does is locks us into three hydrogens and one oxygen. So now we want to look at the reactant side at the hydrogens and see what we might want to do about that. Now you notice that the hydrogens on the reactant side come in bunches of two. So those are even numbers. Whereas on the product side, we have an odd number. But do you notice we have a second opportunity to add hydrogen on the product side? So what could we do in terms of coefficients to work this out? Well, I think that if we had one additional hydrogen here, that would give us four. So we could have a two in front of the H2O. And that's exactly what happens. All right, at this point, we have locked ourselves into four hydrogens and two oxygens. So if we go to the product side, we have one oxygen here. I think we could put a one here, and that would give us our second oxygen. Now all we have to deal with is chlorine. On the product side, we have one, two chlorines. So we need two chlorines on the reactant side, which means we have to put a one in front of the Cl2. Because remember, coefficients are multiplied by subscripts to give us the number of atoms on each side. So now we can take a look at what we have. And we have two chlorine atoms on each side, four hydrogen atoms on each side, and two oxygen atoms on each side. In addition, charge in is equal to charge out. You can find charge as the superscript. So on the left side, we have zero plus zero. On the right side, we have zero minus one plus one, which adds up to zero. So we have also had charge in equal charge out. Let's try another example. Clearly, the most complex material is this one right here with eight atoms. So without any additional knowledge, let's put a one in front of that. This locks us into two carbons and six hydrogens. So that means we need a two in front of this carbon and a three in front of this H2O in order to give us two carbons and six hydrogens. Now, if we look at the product side, we have two times two, so that's four oxygens, and three times one, so that's three oxygens. Four plus three gives us seven. Well, you notice our oxygens come in bunches of two. It's fine to put seven halves in front of the oxygen because that will give us seven. And remember, a mole is a huge number. So half of a mole, even if you're plus one on one half and minus one on the other half, you're never going to notice it. It'll be way down in the decimal point. A lot of times, WebAssign asks that students balance their reactions with simple whole numbers. So if that is the case, we can certainly take each one of these and multiply it by two. 
That will get rid of the seven halves and turn it into a seven. And of course, each of the other coefficients will also be multiplied by two. If we want to double check our results, there are four carbons on each side, there are 12 hydrogens on each side, and there are 14 oxygens on each side. The charge on the reactant side is zero, and the charge on the product side is zero. Here is a question for you to work out. Here is a reaction, and we'd like you to add the coefficients in front of each one so that the reaction is balanced. Balancing equations gives us a ratio statement related to that particular equation. What I have here is a balanced equation for if you wanted to make sodium sulfate from sulfuric acid. I would need one mole of sulfuric acid, two moles of sodium hydroxide, and my recipe would give me one mole of sodium sulfate and two moles of water. So these coefficients are a ratio statement. If I wanted to make two moles of sodium sulfate, clearly I'd need four moles of sodium hydroxide and two moles of sulfuric acid. So think of these as recipes. Now I do like to cook, but I'm not so much about baking. If I bake cupcakes, I'm gonna use the recipe mix in the box. And it tells me to take two eggs, one and a quarter cup water, and the cake mix. If I wanted to make 48 cupcakes instead of 24, instead of two eggs, I would need four eggs. You know this. So if you double the recipe, then you double the ingredients. If you have the recipe, then you have the ingredients. So our recipe for making sodium sulfate is a set ratio. And if we want to change that, we still have to keep our ratio of 1 to 2 to 1 to 2, which this does even though we're starting out with decimals. So that brings us to the idea of going from mass of one chemical to the mass of another chemical, if we were perhaps doing a reaction. Now this is very difficult to visualize with atoms because they're so small you can't see them. So for a moment, I'm going to talk about stoichiometry in terms of breakfast platters. If you are working at a restaurant, your breakfast platter might have two eggs and three slices of bacon. That is what each customer orders and that's what each customer expects. Now let's suppose you work in a kind of unusual restaurant in that the ingredients are weighed. I know that in real life you would just count the eggs, but if the eggs and the bacon were so tiny that you couldn't see them, or if you were trying to do this strictly by mass, you would have to work with this like you do with chemicals and think about the mass of materials. So this question tells you you have 1,043.68 grams of eggs. How many grams of bacon do you need? And then you're given some information. One dozen eggs weigh 782.76 grams. Isn't that sort of like the molar mass from the periodic table? It gives you a group and the mass of that group. You're also told that one dozen slices of bacon weigh 453.58 grams. Again, kind of like a periodic table. The last thing is the suggestion that you remember to include the ratio of eggs to slices of bacon in your calculation. It's not one to one. You need two eggs for every three slices of bacon. So let's think about how we would do this problem. Here is how I recommend approaching this problem. You should go from grams of eggs to individual eggs. 
and then go to individual bacon, followed by grams of bacon. So here is our starting ratio, 1,043.68 grams of egg. We can convert to the number of eggs that we have if we divide by 782.76 grams per 12 egg. If you stop right here, will this not tell you how many eggs you have? Now you need to take into account the stoichiometric ratio of eggs to bacon. The way I set this up was eggs on the bottom and bacon on the top. I hope that makes sense because we want units to cancel out. We're going to need more bacon than egg because the ratio is 3 to 2. So you're going to multiply it by 3 halves, not 2 thirds. Notice how the eggs cancel out. Now we're to individual bacon that we need. And notice that, of course, 12 bacon weigh this particular amount of grams for that 12 bacon. So your answer is 907.16 grams of bacon. So it takes three ratios to go from grams of eggs to grams of bacon. You can also do this with groups. I know many students are uncomfortable with the idea of the mole, but it does work out that if I work in groups, the statements are still true. It's true that one dozen eggs is this mass. It's true that you will have three dozen bacon to two dozen eggs. And it's true that one dozen bacon has this particular mass. So working in groups and canceling is just fine, so long as each of the ratios that you use is 1 divided by 1. In the next lecture, we'll talk about how to do this with chemicals.